Hello Leo, welcome to Divine Day Boo. Thank you so much for being here. This is Kathy speaking. This is your love reading for the month of February, dear Leo. Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus if you're a Divine Feminine. Mars if you're a Divine Masculine out there watching this reading. And for those of you that are familiar with your North Node, you could watch that. If you are familiar with which sign is your North Node facing, that's all about fate. So what's going on in love with this Mercury retrograde during the month of February, dear Leo? What's going on for you as people situations may be coming back from the past? We do have three or four Mercury retrogrades every year. So... We know that we don't start things on the Mercury retrograde, but um, this is like a time now, a chance to revisit, fine tune and uh, clear things up, even though it can be very confusing. But uh, as Mercury retrograde is very close to the Earth, it's more potent, okay? And it's Valentine's Day. There's so much going on for you in your house of partnership, Leo. Let's see, with a relationship cross for Leo, please, Spirit, in the month of February. Okay, Leo. Leo, the relationship cross I will explain as I'm going through now. For those of you that are not familiar, thank you, Spirit. Leo, Leo in love. What is happening in the now between an important relationship? We have the Taurus card. Okay, the Hierophant. What about in the distant past? Wow, this is a spiritual union. This is a spiritual union. And I would say more than likely, obviously someone's in a marriage here. Um, not easy. The Hierophant in this deck um, the Spellcaster's Tarot is not an easy energy. It's like, um, it's very controlling. Could have to do with family, could have to do with a marriage, traditions, the way things have always been done. And it's not easy. He's, as you can see, this priest, let's say, is holding a whip. He wants, he demands uh, respect. But we know that he's a five, and fives always speak of change. But we've got the two uh, spiritual people here. So we've got the High Priestess, Virgo, Pisces, and Taurus. What do you or did you bring to the table in this connection? Okay, so judgment. Um, this could say that you may have been um, in a marriage, an unhappy marriage, a very controlling, narcissistic relationship where you've been hoping for a second chance at happiness. Now, the judgment card, um, we know it's usually help from spirit, but it's also something to do with an awakening, right? An awakening. Now, if you weren't happy, this is like a restart. You get a second chance. Uh, maybe there has been a heavy judgment from you. Let's see the other person. Seven of Swords, no wonder you've judged them quite harshly. Now, Seven of Swords is usually someone that's not on the up and up or they're not very comfortable with speaking about their emotions. So the Seven of Swords is the stealth card. Um, looks like this person is trying to get away with something, so... Obviously, they were not very truthful, or maybe on another note, we could also say if you're dealing with an air sign, could be an air sign, doesn't have to be, um, someone's not ready to face the music. Whatever they've been hiding um, from you, it's as though they they were trying to get away with not communicating truthfully to you about something. It could have to do with anything and this could also be someone that's not wanting to, um, they're too frightened. I feel as though they're sort of self-sabotaging themselves as 
they may not have wanted to understand that this is a very powerful union. Maybe even frightened to look into the mirror, I'm going to say. But right now, with the Hierophant, we know that there are changes. Let's see what the outcome is, Leo. We have the Ace of Swords. That's beautiful. Ace of Swords, you know, the potential is here for truth. The potential is here for severing ties. Whoever has been in a difficult connection, we've got the marriage card, the Hierophant here, which can speak of governmental um, restrictions. So anything to do with traditions, that red tape, a marriage, a business, anything can surround the Hierophant. And we know that the Hierophant is um, a very strong spiritual card. Could there have been a problem where beliefs, even, you, you know, your upbringing, your idealism, your uh, community, your community of people, you know, and your your environment generally, even maybe even your family restricting this connection. So yes, this may have also been a hidden relationship. If this was a clandestine connection, why do I say that? Because first of all, there's a lot of uh, secrecy with the high priestess. She usually is um, the third person. Now, the secrecy may have been because of traditions and all the things that I mentioned before. Some of you may have been in a connection that you didn't want to share with the world. Okay, because um, you were too frightened. But we see here with the judgment card that there is helpful energies coming through. I love the outcome card. The seven of swords, if there has been a breakup between the two of you, Seven of Swords is someone that, you know, stealth card, they've sneaked away. But I feel with the Hierophant and being change could mean, because we've got a fire here where this person is actually seeing the light. We've got fire here as well, which can speak of passion. Fire is life, right? So there's life being breathed into this. We've got fire on this side as well. I do see a lot of passion. Let's see what's what else is wanting to be shown fire. Queen of Wands is my Leo card. Of course, doesn't have to be. We've got Scorpio. We've got Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, Virgo, and um, Pisces. So three fixed energies, fixed signs of it. There's a lot of stubbornness here. Let's look at the Romance Angels for Leo. What's going on in love in the month of February? 2021, as there's so much going on in Aquarius. Wow, okay. For Leo, Leo, please, spirit. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. Codependency addictions are affecting your romantic life. Passion. There's that passion and the fire that I was talking about. Yes, baby. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with, with each other. Okay, the codependency card, even though it speaks of addictions, it does bring up that Capricorn energy, the devil energy, which can mean a very strong attraction. Fears connected to that. Fears of could also be intimacy, could be um, fears of anything surrounding family issues, all the things I mentioned before. Um, playfulness, to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Playfulness does uh, remind me of the Leo energy. Um, and we have had a full moon in the sign of Leo recently. So obviously the sun is moving through Aquarius. So Leo, the sun is in your seventh house as I'm doing this reading. Okay, and the sun gives you clarity. It does give you healing. The healing could come from other people. 
people that you are in opposition to, any relationships nevertheless. Let's take more cards and see what's really going on here. And I'm going to say that codependency, limitations, um, can also be connected to the Hierophant. The limitations, as I said, from family, your community, your beliefs, your religion. For Leo, thank you, Spirit. And we have Pisces, and I believe... We do have two cards, of oh, very spiritual cards. Pisces is also the a very hidden house. So there we go about the clandestine, secretive relationship. Also, Pisces is very spiritual, remember. So it is, um, it is the house of imprisonment uh, limitations, feeling that there are blockages there as well. So... Remember that Pisces is also, it's uh, ruled by Neptune. And Neptune can be confusion, disillusion, deception. So I don't know where the deception com comes from. And I feel that generally speaking with this card, I have to say that there has been deception from the other person. Not being totally truthful about, you know, their emotions, their situation, their family, their living situation let's see let's take some Lenormand and see what's going on for Leo with the Queen of Wands being at the uh, bottom of the deck we know that she's very attractive we've got the Sun Leo is very strong here um, obviously this is your reading but the Sun can also speak of children remember can speak of clarity, can speak of warmth, healing. Let's let's see. And leadership. Queen of Wands, usually quite lucky, very driven, very passionate, very creative. Let's see what else we have. Yeah. So we've got the Hierophant and the Cross here. So a heavy burden. A heavy burden. Also, it's got to do with beliefs, traditions. And blockages. There's the, uh, <laughs> there's the passionate female, which is, I would say, the Queen of Wands. This is more than likely your energy, dear uh, Leo. Unless you're dealing with another Leo or with a Scorpio, could be. Anyway, she, she wears Venus on her chest, so some of you may have either Taurus or Libra in your chart. Let's take another card. And we have the Scythe, the Ten. And the Scythe means, it's very similar to the Ace of Swords, so severing ties with something to do with the past. I feel that healing needs to be had here, and a sort of a lightening up of the energies. We've got playfulness here which it says to recapture. So the re, the, the, the prefix re brings me back to a past connection. So recapture romance. Obviously, this is someone that you know already. Nine of wands and she holds the tenth wand. It's like putting an end to a burdensome uh, chapter in the past. Remember that as we sever ties or cut ties, cut anything that was not healthy, that's when the abundance comes through. Okay, so, um, you know, just with the scythe here and the wheat, it does bring in that empress quality for me. She is wearing Venus on her chest. The empress is all about creation, right? So there is abundance here as long as the Ace of Swords is used. And when I say used, it speaks of clarity, communication, but also severing ties. It is a victory card, as long as the work is done. What's at the bottom here? And we've got the mask. There is the mask, you see. So things unknown, not communicated, kept secret. 
Some of you may have had a choice between two people as well. Why do I say that? Because the Pisces card is a 24, which is the lover's card. So the lovers can mean two different people, but it can also speak of head over heart decision. And the words, I believe, says that obviously here, if someone has been in another connection, they've kept the faith that there could be a new beginning with this. Um, and they've probably been hoping and sending their wishes out. And I feel that this is you, Leo, sending your wishes out. This is help from spirit, from uh, Archangel Michael. And if there has been no talking, no communication... The Seven of Swords, the other person may find a, an intelligent way that they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They're trying to um, get away with not explaining things to do with the past. I don't know if... I don't know if that will work. If you're a cross-watcher out there, I don't think that that will work with Leo. Leo needs the truth, okay? Leo is the sun. Without the truth, there's no healing, Right? Let's take more cards. Why do we have the Hierophant here? Why is the Hierophant here? We've got the Nine of Swords. So a lot of worry, anxiety and stress, sleepless nights where the limitations and the restrictions are concerned. Just looking at the mask here, it, it is a number 40, which um, 40 breaks down to a 4. Now that could speak of the 4th house of family. Also, f number 4 is also the emperor. I have already mentioned the empress. Now the emperor could be a fatherly figure. Someone is scared or, you know, to, to face the emperor. The emperor needs to be on our side. If we're in opposition with the emperor... Um, and I do see the Hierophant many times very similar energetically as the Emperor. Being in opposition with the Emperor is not an easy thing. So maybe that's where the worry comes from. Let's have a look. And we have the Seven of Pentacles. Again, this is the Capricorn energy. But I feel that someone is has been waiting, has been waiting for maybe the door to open, maybe the... Um, situation to for things to work out nevertheless maybe again wishing upon a star and hoping that things will pan out things will fix up seven of pentacles I do see someone still watering this plant so obviously seven of pentacles is a long time this connection has lasted quite a few, could maybe even seven years. And seven years is, seven is a very Saturnian number as well as it's like you're turning a corner. Why do we have the High Priestess here? We've got the Fool. Yeah, someone felt as though they were taken as the Fool because of hidden matters, unspoken words. And I did speak of children as well. We do have a child here with a high priestess. And I did also say that the other person may be a father. And someone has kept something under wraps here. So someone's taken for a ride here. There's been too many secrets. So someone felt as though they took a risk for no reason. Um, let's, take, let's take another card. And we've got the Eight of Cups. So someone left, obviously, left this situation. Eight of Cups, remember, the Cups not being fulfilled. And there's been spiritual growth here as well through the difficulties and the challenges. Why do we have the Judgment card on the position of Leo? Now, Leo, feel free to flip the reading if that is your story. Let's see, this is the card. We have Five of Wands, Conflict. Conflict because of nothing happening. No one's putting in the effort here. Now, if someone, I want to say, Leo, if you were in a connection, in a marriage, um, where there's been 
disharmony, imbalances, ch things are going to change. Okay, let's take another card. And we've got the Page of Cups. Page of Cups, an offer, an apology. For those of you that have judged the other person quite harshly, um, maybe there is an, an apology in store. Let's see what the other person is bringing to the table. Ten of Cups and the Page of Wands. We know that the Ten of Cups is someone that obviously this person may have felt very happy in this connection. But Ten of Cups can also be a family situation, remember. It is a ten that breaks down to the ace. So there is a chance for a new beginning on this side here. And if you think of the Ace of Cups, that is exactly what the Page of Cups holds as well. Um, well, this is the other person is more on the Ace of Cups here. We've got the Page. And the Page is very youthful. Um, but it's also, it's like a learning curve. Remember that Pages are students. They're learning here we've got more so the Ace of Cups now. So there's a restart here. Page of Wands, another page. So we've got two messengers here. Page of Wands, Fire, Aries energy. Some of you may have been dealing with an Aries. Um, Aries, Pisces, Cusper could be. We've got three birds here which can speak of gossip or learning some news off the grapevine, looking, watching, maybe watching and waiting on the internet. I don't know why, but I feel that this person is sort of spying on you through the internet. They could be gathering up information. They're looking for a way to come back. They may be gathering up information um, about what you're up to, what's going on with you. And it's interesting that we've got three birds on this side and we've got three people on this side. That's what is interesting. Page of Wands is someone that's ready to take that leap of faith. It's like the Fool, but it's the Minor Arcana. And I want to say, Leo, if you did all the work in the past, looks like the other person is actually now ready. You've got the Page of Cups, which is more recessive, okay? This person is ready to send out that message. Go on that journey. They're ready to take that risk with you. Let's take the Ace of Swords. We have the Five of Cups, another five. Another five. We've got the Hierophant, five. Five of Wands, five of Cups. Three fives of fifteen. Five of Cups. Looking at the glass half full rather than half empty. Um, it's not an easy Ace of Swords, I'm going to say, dear Leo. Because what I see is that we know that swords can be cutting. Um, we do have three spilt cups here. And there has been, I mean, it's been very painful for you, I would say, more than likely. There is a lot of emotion here with this Five of Cups. And maybe the regrets could be around time timing and we've got the six of cups five of cups six of cups i did speak of a soulmate connection six of cups maybe because of children the timing wasn't right dear leo i do see here that someone is you know you're ready to do the work ace of swords ready to speak clearly have those heart to heart conversations ready to step out ready to step out and be more trusting. Even the Six of Cups could speak of someone from the distant past, back in the days. Let's take the Queen of Wands. She looks very powerful, very uh, decisive. She's got a very strict stance here as well. Let's see. Queen of Pentacles. Some of you Leos may also have planets in Virgo. Usually my Queen of Pentacles is the Virgo or Capricorn card. Wow! Wow, Leo. Three Queens. 
We've got three birds. We've got three people here. Three queens. Three queens it does speak of gossip. There's been other people involved in your situation here. Now, if this is a different side to you, Queen of Pentacles, someone that's very motherly. Queen of Swords, again, that stance, that decisiveness, that sword that cuts. So interesting, interesting. Queen of Swords could also be the divorcee. And you've got the chance to create with that Queen of Wands. Now, Queen of Pentacles, of course, I don't know if some of you may have two other siblings. You may be three sisters. Now, this could also be, I'm going to say, a same-sex relationship where there's three uh, different people here. We've got a Queen of Pentacles, Earth. Queen of Wands and Queen of Swords. Usually Queen of Swords is my Libra card. Does not have to be, of course. At the bottom of the deck is the King of Cups. King of Cups. Wow. King of Cups. Someone that's ready to offer love. Ready to bring that cup forward. King of Cups is uh, very, very... Um, open to love, very sensitive as well. Um, sometimes, you know, water signs can sort of hold back because their their emotions fluctuate. They can be, sometimes they can be deceptive. And it's interesting, this is a Pisces for sure. Why? We've got the triad here, which is the Neptune symbol. And Neptune is all about deception, holding back on truth. We've got the Seven of Swords here. I do feel that we're dealing with a Pisces. We've got the Pisces Aries. So it could be someone that's got Pisces Sun and has got some, also some uh, planets in Aries. And there's the Sun again. Wow. Lovely, lovely. There is going to be heart-to-heart -heart conversations. It's time to, time to speak honestly, and I don't know, I mean, dear Leo, of course, this is your reading, but it, it's a general reading, so it won't be the same for all of you. Obviously, there's been deception here. Um... I'm taking the uh, Island Time Wellness and I will take another card on that Seven of Pentacles because it is energy that is stuck. As I said, someone is willing and still watering that plant, that seed that's been planted. Even though there's a lot of worry and limitations and restrictions, it's all about timing. I'm going to tell you that because Seven of uh, Pentacles is in action. But having the Hierophant there, a five, there are big changes. Remember that the Hierophant is Taurus. Uranus is transiting Taurus. There's going to be change whether you or the other person likes it or not. Let's see what with the Island Time Wellness. Lightning, that is Uranus in Taurus. Sudden change. Shocking news, surprise, epiphany, upheaval, transformation. That's like a tower. Paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness. You've got playfulness twice. Oneness. The word oneness is very Neptunian, so it's Pisces. We're all one, right? Very spiritual. Enjoying each other. And the snake. Competition. Enemy. Clever. There's that seven of swords. Malicious. Look over your shoulder. The other woman. So there was another person here. No doubt. For a lot of you. Now the snake can only... If, if there hasn't been a third person, let's say, which I doubt that, um, whatever the problems were, whether it was religion or family, that was the upheaval, the blockages, 
whatever it was, you've been going through transformation. The snake is that shedding of the old, remember. The snake does mean poison, but it also speaks of healing. What's at the bottom here? And we have photograph. Looking at your photos, missing you, nostalgia, make new memories. There will be new memories here because we've got the six of cups right there. Five and then the six. Before I take my handwritten cards, the love cards, I want to take one card. I want to see what this seven of pentacles is all about. And we have the hermit. Yeah, there's been... There's been quiet, there has been quiet, and the Hermit is Virgo, so a lot of you could be on the cusp. The Hermit is right here, the, the Queen of Pentacles. And the Hermit is obviously, again, another spiritual uh, card. These two are very, very similar. This is like you guys, this connection is coming out of the cave. It's grown spiritually. And what the Five of Cups is saying, let the past go. Sever ties with the past, and now you've got the clarity. You've got the you've got the um, the tool because the Ace of Swords for you is a tool, and the advice is to use it. Sever ties. If if you've had family holding you back, because we we can be speaking about siblings here as well. This could be your partner. Let's say I'm just saying um, one of one of these queens is you and the other two could be siblings from the other person. And there's gossip, there's too many cooks in the kitchen here that need to be severed. There's the, uh, the clock and the clock speaks of timing. It's very restrictive, it is uh, Saturnian, but it is a 10, which is good to see. So this is a cuckoo clock. There's going to be a wake up. There's going to be a wake up call, especially having the judgment card here. There's going to be a wake up call. I think that you're going to be waking up out of a, a de delusion or something that was very confusing for you. Remember that the um, the photograph, very Neptunian. You've got Pisces here. There's been. There's been uh, like a dream-like energy that's been circulating around around you, dear Leo. It's either dream-like or very deceptive, but it says that you're making new memories. So someone is missing you, dear Leo. You're going to hear news. They're going to take that leap of faith. And we've got the compass, yeah? You've been soul-searching, no wonder. We've got the sun here again. Okay, let's take those handwritten messages and see what is going on. There's a lot of sun energies here. There, Ten of Swords, wow. Someone's been... Uh, someone's been stabbed in the back. This is a new cycle. It's like a restart. That's the theme of these readings, right? Just like the scythe here, the Ten. For Leo, please, Spirit, what are the messages or the thoughts? The messages and the thoughts. I'm moving on. I'm healing now, leaving the past. Six of Swords. Why did you leave me? How could you? What went wrong? That's the Five of Cups, which you have up here. Your eyes are familiar to me. I know that we've shared lives before. You must feel it too. So we've got the five and the six of cups just like here. So I'm moving on healing the past. If someone was in another commitment, they've let that go. They're moving away. Now, six of swords could also mean, I mean, it's someone traveling over water. So some of you could be at a distance, at a physical distance from the other person. Um, but also, if you look at the cards, we've got a number 17 here. And 17 is the star. It's the Aquarian energy. Could it be a timing um, energy of the star, the Aquarian energy? Remember that all the planets are in Aquarius. Nearly all the planets are in Aquarius in your seventh house of relationship, dear Leo. Especially, you know, for those of you that are 
even rising Leo. Okay, right across from you is Aquarius. So whatever's going on there, I would say more than likely is either there's going to be hope this month that things will fix up. Also, um, remember that Aquarius, the, the house opposite you is not only romantic connections, it's also um, family connections. And the star being the Aquarius energy, is a wish fulfillment. It's also something that could be at a physical distance. Now, it's either a timing energy, as I said, or it's it's um, something to do with a physical distance because we've got the Six of Swords here. All right, so especially, I mean, the fact that uh, everything that's going on in, in Aquarius with the Mercury retrograde, etc. We've got Uranus in Taurus, which is squaring all those, you know, those energies. It's squaring opposite to, to Uranus. So if someone has been in a situation where they haven't been happy, remember Uranus is lightning. It's, it's the lightning, it's that epiphany, that awakening, that shock. Anyway, Looking at your photos, missing you, nostalgia, making you memories. I think that that's what you will be doing, dear Leo. You're going to be making new memories. And you've gone through a transformation, obviously. It's really good if you've come out of a codependent energy. Codependencies could come from everywhere, from anywhere. It can also speak of a very... Um, magnetic attraction that's hard to break free from anyway i love to see the king of cups here playfulness to recapture you could be recapturing romance again i will leave you with that i want to thank you so much for um spending your precious time with me for liking sharing and subscribing and commenting of course it is very important dear leo so that's um I'm giving you this, the least you could do is give me a like or even comment or share. That is what, um, I mean, I'm giving you generously. The least that one can do is press that like button. And I want to thank you in advance for doing that. So I have to leave you right now. I'm wishing you all the best. Love and light, dear Leo. Ta-da.